this two series Grand Coupe model, BMW belatedly joins the market for compact four door coupes that previously Mercedes had almost to itself with their CLA. It shares nearly all its engineering with the one series hatch, which means it's primarily front driven, but it's very much more aspirational. Looking for a car that's compact, premium, very fashionable, and just a little bit dynamic? BMW hopes it has your number with this model, the 2 Series Grand Coupe. You might well be a little unfamiliar with BMW's Grand Coupe formula, even though it's been around since 2012. That was when the Munich maker launched its 6 Series Grand Coupe, basically a four-door coupe based on a three-box saloon shape for executives wanting something a little more fashionable. Since then, we've also had 4 Series and 8 Series Grand Coupe models, but strangely, never a smaller take on the four-door coupe concept that would take on the car that most tend to think of when it comes to a more compact interpretation of this kind of design, the very profitable Mercedes CLA. This 2 Series Grand Coupe model, though, is that car. The 2 Series tag gives off mixed messages these days because it can mean lots of different things in BMW's current model hierarchy. At the time of this test, in autumn 2020, it was still being used for the brand's ageing F22 Series rear-driven coupe and convertible models, cars that were due for imminent replacement by another rear-driven design. Now, more relevant to what we're looking at here, though, is the fact that the 2 Series moniker is also used by the company's Active Tourer and Grand Tourer compact MPVs, which have a front-driven FAAR platform shared with the current generation Mini Hatch, which was in turn donated to BMW's current 1 Series, which is engineering used in its entirety by this 2 Series Grand Coupe. A one series dressed to the nines for an evening out. That's about what we have here. None of which answers the question as to whether you'd really want one. That's what we're going to try and do here. According to BMW, this two series Grand Coupe will appeal to emotional extrovert people looking for an alternative to the traditional saloon. Or if you want us to read between the lines for you, people who ordinarily wouldn't necessarily prioritise the purchase of a BMW, but might well like this one. It is perhaps with these people in mind that the Munich maker decided to base this car on the primarily front-driven FAAR platform that it uses for its little one-series hatch, rather than the rear-driven chassis developed for the two-door second-generation two-series coupe, which at the time of this test was in the final stages of development. The target market here, BMW reasons, will have little or no interest in which end this car is driven from, and the one series platform is cheaper to make and easier to package. But does it make this car dull to drive? Well, that depends on your expectations. Inevitably, it's not as engaging as a rear driven two series coupe. There's nothing quite like the appealing feel of being pushed through a bend rather than being pulled through it and if this car had that it'd enjoy a significant unique selling point over its Mercedes CLA arch rival. It still manages to shade that car dynamically though thanks to precise accurate steering and an agile willingness to change direction which can deliver quick point-to-point -point driving times over twisty roads. That's helped by an engineering balance that gets within a fraction of achieving perfect 50-50 front to rear weight distribution, which is why the car feels so composed at speed through tight turns. In short, there's still enough here to please someone who likes their driving. This car's FAAR chassis also helps in that regard, using a rich mix of aluminium and high strength steel which stiffens the structure and probably contributes to the slightly firmish ride, though to suit the Grand Coupe Touring remit, the suspension setup is a touch softer than is the case with the 1 Series. Curiously though, despite that remit, adaptive damping can't be had on mainstream models to embellish the sophisticated multi-link rear suspension. It can't be had with the front-driven volume-engineered models anyway. 
there are two basic power plants on offer, a 1.5 litre three cylinder petrol unit and the two litre diesel that we're trying here. The petrol engine features in the entry level 140 horsepower 218i variant that BMW thinks most folk will choose, which offers as much performance as most buyers will probably need, getting to 62 miles an hour in 9.2 seconds with a stick shift or 9.1 seconds with an optional dual clutch 7 speed auto transmission, either way en route to a top speed of 134 miles an hour. To be frank, we've heard more charismatic three-cylinder units and the 12-second 30 to 70 mile an hour overtaking increment time is somewhat slothful for a BMW, but at least this variant's decently refined, like all two-series Grand Coupes actually, shielding you effectively from wind noise and tyre roar and bettering a comparable Mercedes CLA 180 in this regard at highway speeds. The diesel, meanwhile, comes in two states of tune. The base 218D, like the base petrol model, offers a choice of transmissions, but in that case, the automatic is BMW ZF Torque Converter Steptronic Sport 8-speed auto, which can better deal with this larger capacity diesel's greater reserves of torque, and comes complete with steering wheel mounted paddle shifters. If you're quick with them, 62 miles an hour from rest flashes by in around eight and a half seconds in this derivative and there's 350 newton meters of torque, over 50% more pulling power than you get in the 218i to dispatch quick overtakes. Ideally though, you might prefer to stretch to the auto-only 220D diesel derivative that we're trying here, which offers the same 2-litre engine in an uprated 190 horsepower state of tune, in which form the 62 mile an hour sprint takes 7.5 seconds on the way to 146 miles an hour. As an alternative to these two diesel variants, BMW has also engineered a plug-in hybrid model using the same 1.5-litre petrol-electric powertrain that features in their X2 xDrive 25e PHEV, but that engine wasn't offered at this model's launch. Talking of xDrive four-wheel drive, from the launch of this two-series Grand Coupe, BMW declined to offer that system in mainstream versions of this car but decided it was absolutely necessary in the petrol high-performance variant, the M235i. Now, this is an M performance model rather than a full M car, but speed isn't lacking thanks to a four-cylinder, two-litre petrol turbo unit with a deep, muscular note and a 306 horsepower output that, thanks to standard launch control, powers the car to 62 miles an hour in just 4.8 seconds en route to 155 miles an hour. The clutch-based X-Drive system can direct as much as 50% of the engine's torque to the rear axle when necessary, and in addition, the M235i features a mechanical Torsen Limited Slip differential built into the casing at the same 8-speed Steptronic Sport Auto gearbox used on the diesels, which must have been quite an engineering feat. That trick diff and quick accurate steering make the M235i xDrive feel a bit more agile than its two most obvious segment competitors, the Mercedes-AMG CLA 35 4MATIC and the Audi S3 Saloon. But inevitably, it still doesn't have quite the sheer engagement of a proper rear-driven BMW small sports saloon or hot hatch. If we're honest, we find ourselves more charmed by lesser 2 Series Grand Coupe variants like the 220D model that, as mentioned, we've chosen to test today. This isn't one of those engines that you feel particularly inclined to rev out, not much of any import happens over 5000 RPM, but thanks to 400 Newton meters of torque, it's willing where you really need it to be, and is a perfect partner to the way that this BMW can proactively use every ounce of its performance when the road twists and turns. Part of that's down to the BMW Performance Control Torque Vectoring System that intelligently applies the brakes at the wheels on the inside of the bend. Um, but that's a setup all cars in this segment now feature. This car's small but important advantage when it comes to agile handling is down to more unique tractional technology. 
This is found in the ARB contiguous wheel slip limitation package that the brand fits to all versions of this car. Clevertech, the BMW first developed for its electric i3 model to more precisely meter out the battery powertrain's vast reserves of instant torque. Normal traction control systems work in concert with stability control and apply subtle braking the instant the software senses the wheels are about to spin too fast. But ARB reacts 10 times quicker than such a conventional setup, which means that it's more precisely able to control the engine's torque. That can often stop the wheels from over-rotating in the first place, and so reduces the need for time-consuming brake intervention, meaning that your progress through the turns is both smoother and faster. Now, of course, you don't really have to know how it works, but if you enjoy your driving, you will appreciate the difference that it makes. Whatever engine you choose in your 2 Series Grand Coupe, you'll find it designed to work with a standard vehicle dynamic system that these days is very familiar to BMW drivers. Drive Performance Control, the mode buttons for which you'll find down here by the gear stick. If you're coming to this car from another premium brand, then you're probably already familiar with this sort of thing. The setup that allows you to tweak the steering, the throttle and the stability control system thresholds depending on the operating mode that you select. Gear change times two if you've an auto gearbox model. Ignore drive performance control or select its most relaxed comfort or efficient Eco Pro settings and the travelling experience in this car, though very comfortable, isn't especially memorable. Select Sport though and the reaction you get immediately feels keener and more alert, even including artificial blips as you downshift through the gears. Sport also adds extra weight to the steering, though in a way that can make the helm of this car feel rather artificially heavy. Drive performance control can also alter ride quality, though only if you happen to have chosen a top M235i variant and have paid extra for adaptive suspension. What else might you need to know here? Well, there's a great deal more technology whirring away beneath the surface, and not only when it comes to the various camera-driven safety and semi-autonomous driving features that can be fitted. Take, for instance, the way that intelligent tech cuts in to alter the shift programs of the two auto gearboxes to suit your planned route and the current driving conditions. Plus, where active cruise control is fitted, the auto boxes both factor in GPS data to avoid unnecessary gear changes in a quick succession of bends. We also like the innovative reversing assistant, which offers automated reversing in confined spaces. To do that, this feature stores steering movements for any section of road the car has driven over at under 22 miles an hour. The system is then able to automatically reverse the vehicle for distances of up to 50 metres while steering it along exactly the same line it took when moving forward. All the driver has to do is operate the accelerator and brake pedal and monitor the vehicle's surroundings. It's a clever feature that we've already found useful on some of the brand's larger models. All of which leaves us, well, where? With a great driving machine? The motoring press generally seems to have decided not, but if you wanted that, you'd have opted for a rear-driven 2 Series Coupe. This Grand Coupe model plays to a rather different crowd who we think will find this car quite as engaging as it needs to be. You'll buy this car because of the way it looks, no question. Designer Simon Sebastian enthuses about its flowing, long and elegant roofline, and others seem to agree. At its launch, a Paris jury voted this the best-looking new car of 2020. Like most four-door coupes, this one is distinguished by frameless side windows and a swept-back silhouette which makes the car look a fraction more compact than it actually is. This 2 Series Grand Coupe is just over 4.5 metres long and 1.8 metres wide, but stands just 1.42 metres tall. 
You can't understand the essence of this design, though, simply by looking at dimensional figures. There's an emotive feel to the shape of this car, highlighted here at the side by two main feature lines, which play with light and shadow. A mid-level one that flows just beneath the door handles, and a, and a lower one that eases up from the front sill to give the flanks some shape. The arched window graphic angles back to end in the usual classic BMW Hofmeister kink behind the C-pillar, which here has been delivered slightly differently, kinking down towards the muscular strong hips. And large wheels feature, which can be between 17 and 19 inches in size. Here we've got 18-inch M double-spoke rims. And it offers plenty of overtaking presence. The large corner air intakes below the fog lamps hint at performance potential, while these slightly angled full LED headlights draw attention to the familiar BMW kidney grille, which extends almost the full width between those lights and features bars contoured with eye-catching vertical indentation. On M Sport models, uh, these bars can be finished with satinated aluminium and they are finished in cerium grey on the M235i, which also gets larger outer air intakes. The rear isn't perhaps quite as eye catching, but the full LED L shaped tail lamps, another classic BMW design cue, have distinctive nighttime illumination. Horizontal lines emphasise the low centre of gravity. You've got these narrow faux air intakes at each corner and slim reflectors sit above little angled kinks in the bumper above the exhaust pipes. You get either single or twin tailpipes depending on the engine you've chosen. As usual, of course, what's more important is what you can't see. Intensive use of aluminium for the bonnet and boot lid, for instance, as well as high strength steels. All of which also features in the stiff, strong FAAR chassis that this car borrows from its one series showroom stable mate. That is, after all, what this car really is, a stylized one series derivative, and a model that, like that car, can on request be specified to lock or unlock itself with a compatible smartphone, even if the battery's dead. But let's not get distracted with details. Is this a proper coupe? This frameless door certainly makes it feel like one. But the slightly lower slung driving position that genre might lead you to expect doesn't really materialise once inside. Instead, cabin architecture from the 1 Series hatch has been carried over virtually unaltered, which means that it feels very much like the current G20 Generation 3 Series, which means that it feels very nice indeed, offering a snug, cockpit-like driving stance. No, you don't get the space-age feel of a rival Mercedes CLA with all its twinkling lights and screens, or the knurled, classy coolness of a sporty Audi A3 saloon. But as a quality compromise between these two approaches, this cabin takes some beating and feels quite fashionable if you're extrovert enough to get away with this optional magma red leather upholstery you'd certainly be reluctant to revert back to a volume-branded product after living with this BMW. Not least because this car has the interior ambience of a larger, more luxurious product. Designer Simon Sebastian claims that light is the new decor here. Traditional trim inlays replaced to some extent by intricate extended lighting illuminated strips that flow into the immaculately finished double-stitched doors. Unless you delve down into the deeper reaches of the fascia, soft touch surfaces predominate and there's a properly solid feel to all the fixtures and fittings, with build quality from the Leipzig factory seemingly almost faultless. Little design features help too. The start-stop button, for instance, is next to the gear stick where it would be on an upmarket product. As, of course, does the sophisticated technology on display, though we've some reservations here, and to some extent, the tech you actually get will depend a lot on your choice of equipment. 
Unlike on a rival Mercedes CLA or Audi A3, you don't, with entry-level trim, get a fully digital instrument cluster display, which seems a bit yesteryear on a premium product in this day and age. The standard Live Cockpit Plus operating system 6.0 spec gets you two conventional gauges separated by a 5.1-inch trip computer readout. Even if you pay extra for a TFT instrument cluster screen, the 10.25-inch setup that we have here, it's not particularly configurable, which is strange given that Audi's virtual cockpit package has been showing the market how this sort of thing should work since 2014. Not everyone likes the opposite swinging speedometer and rev counter needles of this BMW display and you can't completely lose them even if you opt for the reduced mode that focuses attention on the GPS map readout in the middle of the screen. Uh, that can't be expanded to fill the whole of the monitor as is possible with rival systems. This digital dash comes only as part of what BMW calls its Live Cockpit Professional Package, which is something you really have to look at if you're considering this car and is a setup that's extra cost or requires M Sport trim on all variants bar the top M235i where it's standard. This live cockpit professional option delivers the operating system 7.0 tech borrowed from the company's larger cars and also gets you a range of extra media features along with an increase in the size of this central infotainment display from 8.8 .8 to 10.25 inches. We'd want the live cockpit professional upgrade not only because of its bigger screens but also because it includes Wi-Fi hotspot preparation and a clever caring car feature that uses music, climate settings and lighting settings to relax or vitalize you. Plus, having live cockpit professional widens the way that you can interact with the car. With this extra tech fitted, you can pay extra on top of the live cockpit professional price in order to get BMW's gesture control system, which allows you to operate certain infotainment functions with hand movements around the centre stack. But we wouldn't bother because the operating system 7.0 upgrade includes a more sophisticated voice control system that in our view will allow you to interact with the professional package tech rather better. We're referring to the Bavarian brand's helpful Intelligent Personal Assistant, an inclusive part of that live cockpit professional package. This is a supposed fount of all knowledge that responds to voiced questions prefaced by Hey BMW, much as does the MBUX system in arrival Mercedes CLA, though here you have to press a steering wheel button to get it to activate. BMW, of course, insists that its setup is cleverer. Um, you can give it a name if you think it'll help you bond with it better. Uh, you can request it to tell you a spontaneous joke. And the press kit tells us we can even ask it the meaning of life. It's more likely, of course, that you'll be using it to make day-to-day -day driving just that little bit easier. If you tell it you're cold, it'll turn up the temperature. If you don't understand a particular feature, it'll trot out explanatory text from the online handbook. Or you might want it to check your oil level, look for fuel stations along your route, or read out your messages. Whatever media package you opt for with this car, Live Cockpit Plus with its smaller screens, or the Live Cockpit Professional package we've just been briefing you on, you should feel that this BMW's infotainment system is very much up to class standard. With both the center dash screen formats, the layout is clear and logical, and we like the simple intuitive way the iDrive system works with its neat lower controller, a better solution than the touchpad of that rival Mercedes, and screen tiles that can be customized to your taste. The display's sidebar menu gives you media, communication, navigation, car and apps options that are also duplicated by buttons next to that lower iDrive controller and connect you into features like the DAB audio system, 4G LTE connectivity and advanced navigation. Plus the system can remotely update its own software and there's also what the brand calls an open mobility cloud that via a clever BMW Connected Plus app can allow you to interact with the car when you're not in it. For instance, allowing you to remotely view it in 3D. There's smartphone mirroring too and it now covers Android Auto as well as Apple CarPlay. 
but quite a lot of the other connected drive digital stuff is still time limited before subscriptions become payable. So check the small print carefully. You do at least get three years free use of helpful stuff like real-time traffic information and BMW's excellent concierge service, the latter feature connecting you through to an operator with a 24-7 service answering just about any journeying query you might have. Enough with media stuff. Let's get on to more practical issues. It's annoying to find that lumbar adjustment costs extra with all trim levels, as is the case with the Mercedes CLA. But assuming that you have it, it's difficult to imagine how you could fail to get comfortable in this car, thanks to the amount of movement and adjustability provided by both seat and wheel. Go for M Sport trim and you get this lovely leather stitched wheel which is brilliant, thick and grippy. But at some angles can sometimes obscure the bottom of the instrument dials. Not that you'll be looking at them very much if you've opted for the optional head up display which shows with a wider graphic than most rival systems. What about all round visibility? Well there are pluses and minuses here. The view forwards is fine, aided by slim A-pillars, but as usual with anything that purports to be any kind of coupe, the view rearwards is compromised by a sloping roofline and a sharply angled back window, so you'll need the standard fit parking sensors. We've no complaints about cabin practicality though. A central lidded storage cubby sits between the seats and includes a USB port, plus the glove box is a reasonable size, as are the door bins, which includes holders big enough to take uh, one litre water bottles. Uh, twin cup holders sit at the base of the centre stack, with a moulding incorporating a 12 volt port and a USB point, and there's a slot just behind that that'll wirelessly charge your phone, if you've specified that option. Uh, BMW has forgotten to include an overhead sunglasses compartment, but there's a useful compartment by the driver's right knee and ticket clips in the sun visors. Time to take a seat in the back. If you're choosing this car as a more stylized alternative to BMW's 3 Series saloon, it's obviously here that you'll notice the biggest differences, as you'd expect would be the case, given this Grand Coupe model's less boxy silhouette and 183mm reduction in length. If you're 6 foot or taller, you'll certainly need to duck quite a bit to get under the cant rail. And once inside, taller folk who ease back against the headrest will find the tops of their heads brushing the roofline, which might irritate a little on longer trips. The headroom figure is 817mm, that's 40mm less than you get in a 1 Series, but 10mm more than in a rival Mercedes CLA. The scallop seat backs create a bit of extra space for your knees, and as for legroom, well there's 617mm of it, which is the same as a CLA, but here you get a bit more space to tuck your feet beneath the seat ahead. That leg space figure, by the way, is 40 millimeters less than you get in that BMW 1 series model. Thanks to the relative narrowness of the body shell and this rather high center tunnel, you'd obviously be really pushing it to get a third adult in the middle of this rear bench. A 3 series struggles to do that, and that car's an inch wider. But a trio of small kids would probably be okay as long as you didn't mind the middle occupant being without an Isofix child seat fastening. Still, if BMW had followed our preference and created this car on a rear driven platform, there'd be even less space back here. Practical touches include central vents above twin USB ports, overhead coat hooks and reading lights, netted seat back pockets, Isovic fastenings for the outer two seating positions, and decently sized door bins with bottle holders. This fold out centre armrest incorporates a couple of cup holders covered by pop up lids, and the double stitched door cards include three kinds of classy trim, delivering a really upmarket effect. Let's take a look out back. This boot lid can be embellished with extra cost comfort access, which allows you to raise it by waving your foot beneath the bumper if, key in pocket, you approach the car with both hands laden down with bags. 
Inside the trunk, you're provided with a reasonable 430 litres of cargo capacity. That's 50 litres more than a 1 Series hatch, but 30 litres less than that Mercedes CLA rival. Though access is hampered by this rather small boot opening. There's extra space beneath the boot floor and a couple of silver tie-down points, though wiser customers will ensure that most of this lower space is taken up by the available optional spare wheel, an option denied to M235i buyers. On the right-hand side, you get netted storage, a 12-volt port and a bag hook, and a warning triangle is incorporated into the inner part of the boot lid. The catch is to retract the seat back, sit here on the cargo area in a roof where there's painted metal and exposed wires, which doesn't feel very premium. The rear seat back has a versatile 40-20-40 split, so you'll be able to push long items like skis through between a couple of rear seated folk. launch, this 2 Series Grand Coupe range was priced from around £26,500, with asking figures that then stretched up towards the £38,000 mark. In the mainstream 2 Series Grand Coupe lineup, there are two trim levels, Sport, or for £2,500 more, M Sport, which is what we have here, each spec level offering its own unique styling and equipment package. Your starting point in the lineup will lie with the 1.5 litre three cylinder petrol 218i. BMW thinks most 2 Series Grand Coupe models will be sold with this engine and M Sport trim at an asking price of just under £30,000. An extra £1,350 more gets you this petrol power plant mated to 7 speed dual clutch automatic transmission. Your alternative engine option in the mainstream range is a 2 litre diesel, the most accessible version of which is the 150 horsepower version in the 218D, offered either with a manual gearbox or 8 speed sport auto transmission for £1,600 more. At the top of the lineup sit two variants that only come with that Sport Auto gearbox, either the 220D model that we're trying here, which uses that same 2-litre diesel in an uprated 190 horsepower state of tune, or the top M235i xDrive derivative, which has a bespoke spec and uses a twin-power turbo 2-litre petrol unit, putting out 306 horsepower, mated to all-wheel drive and a limited slip differential. Inevitably, the 2 Series Grand Coupe range will widen as time goes on. BMW has, for instance, also engineered a 1.5-litre plug-in hybrid petrol-electric version of this car, though that wasn't available at launch. Let's position this 2 Series Grand Coupe in the BMW lineup for you. It costs a thousand to fifteen hundred pounds more than an identically engineered equivalent 1 Series hatch. BMW also offers a two-door rear-driven two-series coupe, which at the time of this test was the old F22 generation model, but was about to be replaced. Plus, this little grand coupe offers much of the same engineering you get in the brand's only slightly larger three-series saloon model, at a model-for-model -model saving of around £6,000. But, of course, all of these cars have a rather different buying demographic from a 2 Series Grand Coupe. As ever, it depends what you want. Right, on to rivals from competing brands. The most obvious one is the Mercedes CLA, the compact four-door coupe that this BMW most closely copies. That Merc costs quite a bit more. A base petrol CLA 180 AMG line model, for instance, costs around £5,000 or around £3,000 more than a directly comparable 2 Series Grand Coupe 218i. The difference depending on whether you compare against the BMW in base Sport trim or this mid-range M Sport guys. For reference, this Grand Coupe 220D diesel M Sport model will save you around £1,500 over a much more sparsely equipped CLA 220D AMG line model. The other car that you might be conceivably comparing against in this segment, even though it's not actually a four-door coupe, is Audi's Savelt A3 Saloon. 
S-Line trim with that Ingolstadt product will give you a lot of the pavement presence you get with this BMW. And with that spec, an A3 Saloon 35 TFSI S-Line model would save you around a thousand pounds over a comparable 2 Series Grand Coupe 218i M Sport. For reference, this Grand Coupe 220D diesel M Sport model costs around £3,000 more than a comparable A3 Saloon 35 TDI S-Tronic S-Line. But with the Audi, you're really just getting a three-box version of the conventional A3 Sportback hatch. This Grand Coupe feels like much more of a unique product, and for likely customers, that'll matter. If, having considered your alternatives, you've decided that it is a 2 Series Grand Coupe that you really want, then you're going to need to know exactly what's included in the standard spec. Well, let's see. Now, even the base sport trim level offers a bit of pavement presence thanks to the inclusion of 17-inch double-spoke alloy wheels, uh, front and rear bumper elements finished in high-gloss black, and high-gloss shadow line exterior trim that features on the mirror and window frames and the B and C pillars. Plus, uh, you get LED headlamps, LED front fog lights, uh, park distance control, front and rear parking sensors, heated powered mirrors, uh, an alarm, and auto headlamps and wipers. There's also a package of Active Guard Plus camera safety features. Uh, we'll get to those in a few minutes. Inside, Sport Trim gets you two zone air conditioning, contrast stitching on the dash, illuminated interior trim, BMW door sill finishes, and sport seats upholstered with orange or grey highlights, and a smart combination of Nivala cloth and Sensatec man made leather. There's also cruise control with a braking function, an auto dimming rear view mirror, and a sport multifunction three spoke leather trim steering wheel. In addition, there's the drive performance control system that via Eco Pro, Comfort and Sport modes allows you to alter throttle response, steering feel and on an auto model, gear change timings. All of it better suiting the way that you want to drive. Now, you'll want to know about infotainment and media stuff too. There's lots of it. Let's start with the fact that with Sport Spec, two series Grand Coupe models come as standard with the brand's BMW Live Cockpit Plus package, which gives you an 8.8 .8 inch center dash display, your access point for a navigation system, Bluetooth with audio streaming, 4G LTE connectivity, an onboard computer, and a decent quality six speaker 100 watt DAB stereo. There's also a 5.1 inch display in the instrument cluster. The other standard media package inclusion your dealer will want to tell you about on this car is called Connected Package Professional. That gives you a whole range of media connectivity services, though only for three years, after which you'll have a subscription to pay. As you'd want in this day and age, these services include Apple CarPlay and Android Auto smartphone mirroring, but there's much more besides. Some of the other Connected Package Professional features include uh, real-time traffic information uh, which supplies details about the location and duration of any delays that you might encounter in your journey. Uh, there's remote services which helps you to locate your car if you've forgotten where you parked it and can remotely lock or unlock the cars via your smartphone uh, from wherever you happen to be. Plus, there's a concierge services feature that connects you to a BMW call center agent who's available as an around-the-clock assistant for any questions you might have about your car or your journey as you drive it. There's also connected parking, which offers multi-story and on-street parking information in selected UK and European cities. Uh, BMW Maps, which allows you to send destinations to your car from your home or office PC and an in-car experiences package which adapts the interior ambience to your mood. The connected package professional package also includes connected music which offers unlimited streaming of millions of songs from Spotify. And there's a selectable caring car feature on the center infotainment screen that uses music, lighting and the climate control in a three minute long session that will either vitalize or relax you. 
We'll also mention that for the first three months of ownership, you'll get BMW's connected teaser package, which includes the useful Microsoft Office 365 feature that creates an in-car office environment, synchronizing emails, contacts and calendar entries, plus enabling Skype for business calls to be joined with just one click. As would now be expected from the brand, 2 Series Grand Coupe customers additionally get a full suite of BMW Connected Drive services. These include teleservices, which can send you service appointments and vehicle-specific service data, BMW's suite of online services, which give you access to things like news reports, weather forecasts, and a whole range of BMW apps, and intelligent functionalities, which learn your habits for greater journeying comfort and can read out text messages to you. Talking of being connected, all 2 Series Grand Coupe customers will be offered use of a clever My BMW app that can learn your mobility routines, read your calendar and even prompt you when to leave for scheduled journeys. It'll get familiar with your most frequently travelled routes and memorise them as future destinations. It even has a share live trip status feature that allows the driver to share their current location and time of arrival with business partners, friends or family. All of that comes with standard sport trim. Ideally though, you'd want to dress this car up a little and the next trim level up, M Sport does just that with 18 inch M light alloy double spoke wheels and a standard M aerodynamic body style kit, which includes a dark shadow finish for the bumpers and lower side sill covers and aluminum struts for the front grille. There are also auto headlights with beam throw control and you get power folding mirrors along with sharper M Sport steering. Bear in mind that with this sportier trim level, slightly stiffer M Sport suspension comes as standard, so make sure you're happy with the idea of a firmer ride. Inside with M Sport spec, the main additions are Dakota leather upholstery with contrast stitching, front seat heating, an extended lighting package with illuminated trim elements, an anthracite headliner, M designated door sill plates and the chunky M Sport leather steering wheel that BMW buys like so much. Possibly the main reason why you might upgrade to M Sport trim though is that it gets you the brand's desirable live cockpit professional package. Now with this you get a much larger touch sensitive 10.25 inch center dash monitor, a control display screen of the same size to replace conventional dials in the instrument cluster, Wi-Fi hotspot preparation and touch functionality for the iDrive controller. You'd expect all this extra tech to be able to do more and sure enough it can, primarily through what BMW calls an intelligent personal assistant, which works a bit like the Siri or Google Assistant systems you might use on your phone and is there to answer questions that you can voice to the car as you drive it, prefaced by the command, hey BMW. You'll have to pay a subscription for this feature after three years of use. As you might expect, the top M235i xDrive variant has its own unique M Performance spec. That gives this top variant specially tuned steering and suspension, plus its 18 inch M light alloy double spoke wheels have a bicolour cerium grey matte finish and the front and rear bumper styling is bespoke. There's an M rear spoiler and a cerium grey finish for the exhaust tailpipe, the side M logo, the mirror caps and the frame of the front kidney grille. The M235i's interior is set apart by M seat belts, bespoke door sill finishes, and M sport seats with upholstery in trigon cloth and anthracite alcantara. Plus, this flagship variant comes with X driver all wheel drive and an M sport braking system. Right, what about options? Let's open up that whole subject and focus on what you might want to add to a more affordable version of this car. As usual on a BMW, there's plenty of scope for extra spend. A good starting point here lies with the various optional packs, the main ones based around either comfort or technology. The comfort pack one is only for sport model customers and includes power folding mirrors, front seat heating and extended lighting. If you've added that pack to your car, you'll additionally be offered the comfort pack two option, also available to customers of M Sport and M235i models, which includes steering wheel heating, powered front seat adjustment with memory settings, and what BMW calls comfort access, basically keyless entry and gesture control for the boot lid. Right, let's move on to the technology pack. 
which is available across the whole 2 Series Grand Coupe lineup. Now, this includes a head-up display, a reversing assist camera with park assist to steer you into spaces, enhanced Bluetooth with a wireless charging mat, Wi-Fi hotspot preparation, and BMW Icon Adaptive LED headlights that adapt themselves to road conditions and feature a high beam assistant. If, like many customers for this car, you've opted for this M Sport trim level, you'll be offered the option of the M Sport Pro Pack that we've got here, which gives you much of the look and feel of that top M235i variant. The M Sport Pro Pack includes a different 18-inch alloy wheel design, MV spoke in orbit grey, along with extended high-gloss shadow line exterior trim, an M rear spoiler, and the blue calipers of the M Sport braking system. Plus, the pack also includes M seat belts, sun protection glass, and a Harman Kardon loudspeaker system audio upgrade. You can also add an optional Pro Pack to the M235i, but we wouldn't because this Pro Pack's larger 19 inch wheels, available in either a V spoke or a double spoke design, means that you lose the valuable adaptive damping system option. The M235i Pro Pack also includes sun protection glass and the Harman Kardon loudspeaker system. Right, enough with packs. You don't have to have one of those. In fact, you may prefer to individually select the various comfort and technology pack features we've just mentioned as standalone options. As for other additions, well, we'd certainly recommend the live cockpit professional infotainment and instrument screen setup we were talking about earlier, which can be ordered separately with base sport trim for an extra thousand pounds. Do that and you'll be offered the opportunity to further upgrade this setup with gesture control for a further £300. Let's move on to driving stuff. Perhaps the most significant element you can't have on mainstream models is adaptive suspension, which is rather surprising because it's available as an option on mainstream 1 Series models. You can have it on the top M235i variant though, as we mentioned earlier, and we'd recommend that you pay the extra £500 that BMW wants for it because there are times when you might find the passive M Sport suspension rather over firm on that derivative. Adaptive suspension works through the various drive performance control driving mode settings. But let's get on to the driving orientated extra features that you can have across the range. Things like a head up display and active cruise control with a stop and go function. Across the lineup, plenty of customers will want to consider the BMW Icon Adaptive LED headlamps we've been trying here, which can adapt their beam in a myriad of ways to road conditions and surrounding traffic. Or, if you can't afford those, you could at least upgrade the LED headlights with high beam assist. There's also an innovative reversing assistant, which offers automated reversing in confined spaces. To do that, this feature stores steering movements for any section of road the car is driven over at under 22 miles an hour. The system is then able to automatically reverse the vehicle for distances of up to 50 meters while steering it along exactly the same line it took when moving forward. All the driver has to do is to operate the accelerator and brake pedal and monitor the vehicle's surroundings. Talking of reversing, if you think you or your partner might struggle with slotting this car into tight spaces, you could also consider the Park Assist system, which automatically does it for you and includes a reversing assistant camera. What about luxury niceties? Well, the Harman Kardon surround sound audio setup we've already mentioned. A wireless charging mat is available as part of an extended Bluetooth with wireless charging option, and you can add Wi-Fi hotspot preparation. You might also want to know that a panoramic glass roof is available, and there's lumbar support for the front seats, which annoyingly isn't standard with any trim level. You might also like to have powered seat adjustment with memory settings, steering wheel heating, and sun protection glass. Earlier, we referenced the popular Comfort Access package, which will allow you to operate the boot lid with a wave of your foot beneath the bumper. Plus, Comfort Access gives you keyless entry and will enable you to unlock the car with your smartphone, provided that your handset is one of those that's compatible. Practical extras include a luggage compartment separating net, and of course, you can have a detachable tow bar. 
there's a luggage compartment mat and an advanced car eye dash cam. We'd also want to pay extra for the larger 50 litre fuel tank, which only comes as standard with the X-Drive models. At the time of this test, this car couldn't be had with optional run-flat tyres, and with that being the case, we'd say that the optional Space Saver spare wheel is near essential if, in the event of a puncture, you don't want to be stranded on the side of the road with a fiddly puncture repair kit. Uh, you might also want to consider the BMW Trackstar vehicle tracking system in case of theft. On to aesthetics. If you don't want your car's paintwork finished in the standard alpine white or jet black solid shades, you're going to have to pay more for one of the extra cost metallic colours. We've got black sapphire here. There's also a special BMW individual Storm Bay metallic shade. To complete the effect, there's a bespoke selection of alloy wheels that vary from 17 to 19 inches in size. You'll want to get the look of the interior right too. On sport models, you can add in full Dakota leather upholstery, and sport variants can have this in black, mocha, oyster grey, or as in this car, magma red, with black or red Dakota leather also available to M235i customers. And if you've gone for that M235i variant or any M Sport model, there's the no cost option of swapping out the standard illuminated Boston trim inlays for alternative illuminated Berlin ones. Enough with optional extras. Let's move on to focus on safety, which is, as you'd expect from BMW, well accounted for. Hence, this car's full house five star Euro NCAP safety rating. Now, like the 1 Series, this Grand Coupe features the Active Guard Plus package that now features across all of BMW's modern models, which gets you the brand's front collision warning autonomous braking technology. Now with this, at over 30 miles an hour, the vehicle scans the road ahead for potential accident hazards and if one is detected you'll be warned and the brakes preconditioned for maximum effectiveness. The driver can be specifically alerted to the presence of cyclists. Should you be travelling at under 30 miles an hour and be not responding to a detected hazard, the brakes will automatically be applied, reducing the severity of any resulting accident and hopefully alleviating it altogether. Active Guard Plus also includes two further elements, lane departure warning to stop inattentive drivers from veering over lane delineating lines on the highway, and speed limit assist, which pictures the speed limit signs that you pass, displaying them on the dash. Other Neat safety features fitted across the range of standard include an alertness assistant that monitors you for signs of drowsiness, a trailer stabilisation function that'll stop trailer sway if you've a trailer fitted, and hill start assistant that'll stop you from drifting backwards on uphill junctions. Best of all, we think, is the BMW emergency call with teleservices system, which in an accident can automatically alert the emergency services. Now this system not only gives them your exact GPS location, but also provides recovery personnel with information on your speed at point of impact, how hard the seat belts were pulled, how many airbags burst, and so on. If you were to have a crash, it would all mean not only that the emergency teams would know exactly where you were, but also that they would arrive on the scene more prepared and ready to get you to safety than they could ever otherwise be, a potentially life-saving difference. The setup's now been further improved to also automatically activate after low-speed collisions below the threshold for airbag deployment, immediately after the impact, flashing up an iDrive screen message offering to contact BMW's Accident Assistance Service directly. We shouldn't forget that this BMW comes with all the expected basic passive safety stuff too. Things like twin front side and curtain airbags, plus front and rear Isofix child seat fastenings, and the usual electronic assistance for traction and stability control, primarily DSC plus stability control and DTC traction control. Plus there's a performance control system that suppresses understeer in tight turns that'll also see you experience extra traction from an electronic differential lock control system. There's plenty of braking peace of mind too, with the ABS system supplemented by fading compensation, uh, CBC cornering brake control and a neat brake drying system that keeps the brake discs free of moisture in wet weather. 
Panic stops are aided by a brake assist system and advertised to following motorists by dynamic brake lights that flash as a bright warning. You also get multi-collision braking uh, that in the event of an impact will keep brake pressure applied until you come to a complete stop. Want to go further with safety kit? Well, the key extra cost option here is what BMW calls its driving assistant pack, which for a further £1,000 gets you a whole range of extra camera-based safety features. These include five key elements. We'll talk you through them. First, there's lane change warning, which prompts the driver if he or she is about to pull out with a vehicle in their blind spot and will, if necessary, guide the car back onto the correct path by means of automatic steering input. Rear collision prevention senses when you're about to be hit from behind and braces the car to minimise the effect on occupants. Rear crossing traffic warning alerts you to oncoming traffic when you're reversing out of a space. The approach control and pedestrian warning with city braking function, that's a feature that builds on this car's autonomous braking tech for even greater peace of mind in urban situations. And for the open road, provided your 2 Series Grand Coupe has automatic transmission, you'll also get the active cruise control with stop and go function feature that we mentioned earlier, which will automatically keep you a safe distance behind the car in front on the highway. Should you come across a motorway tailback, this feature can seamlessly slow the car to a stop, then, when appropriate, return it back to cruising speed. That last feature can be ordered separately if you like the sound of it. The engine range on offer across the 2 Series Grand Coupe Lana may look pretty familiar if you know your BMWs, but the Munich maker is keen to point out that every single twin power turbo unit has been subjected to significant efficiency fettling, as was necessary to match the exacting current class standard. The three-cylinder petrol unit in the entry-level 218i variant, for instance, previously familiar from the Mini Hatch and the 2 Series Active Tourer, has had five kilograms trimmed from its weight. Changes to the 2-litre diesel unit that we're trying here have also had quite an effect, improving efficiency of this power plant by around 5%, or so BMW claims. Also helping here is the relatively light weight of this car's aluminium-rich F. AAR platform, though that still leaves this Grand Coupe tipping the scales about 20 kilograms heavier than a rival Mercedes CLA. Despite that, this BMW is able to eke out a small but significant efficiency advantage over that rival Mercedes. Let's get specific with the WLTP rated figures, which are generally about 10% better than those of the 1 Series hatch, and all of which, as usual, are based around the smallest wheels available with each engine. Obviously bigger rims, like for instance the 18 inches fitted to this test car, will make a potentially significant impact on the stats applicable to the car you end up choosing. We'll start at the bottom of the range with the 218i three-cylinder petrol derivative that most customers for this car choose. With either kind of transmission, this petrol model manages up to 49.6 miles to the gallon on the combined cycle and around 130 grams per kilometre of CO2. Now, to give you some class perspective, a comparable Mercedes CLA 180 Auto manages 45.6 miles to the gallon and up to 138 grams per kilometre. On to the 2 litre diesel models. The 218D manages up to 60.1 miles to the gallon and 123 grams per kilometre in manual form, or 57.6 miles to the gallon and 129 grams per kilometre as an auto, which are also the figures for this auto-only 220D. And for completion, we'll tell you that the auto-only M235i X-Drive petrol performance variant manages up to 39.8 miles to the gallon and, on 18-inch wheels, 162 grams per kilometre of CO2. BMW has also engineered a plug-in petrol-powered version of this car, fitted out with the same 1.5-litre powertrain as features in the Mini Countryman PHEV and the BMW X2 X-Drive 25e, but that wasn't available from the launch of this model. As a guide, though, for this electrified variant, you'd be looking at official figures of around 145 miles to the gallon on the combined cycle and about 40 grams per kilometre of CO2, with two and a half hour wall box recharging times and a WLTP rated all-electric range of about 30 miles. 
whatever kind of 2 Series Grand Coupe engine you choose, it'll benefit from the Munich Maker's various efficient dynamics technologies, there to keep running costs in check. There's an engine auto start stop system, as you would expect, and at highway speeds, when you're in either comfort or eco pro mode, the cruise control can use a coasting feature to seamlessly decouple the engine from the transmission to reduce friction and consequently save fuel. The coasting and auto stop functions take their cue from data supplied by the navigation system. The same data is used by auto gearbox models to avoid unnecessary gear changes in a quick succession of bends. Of course, the driver will also need to do his or her part. The figures we've just quoted assume that the car is being run in the drive performance control system's most frugal Eco Pro mode. In this setting, the air conditioning and power steering only work when required to save energy. Uh, you can configure or deconfigure the various power source elements within EcoPro if you wish, activating or deactivating efficiency programs for things like seat heating, climate and what BMW calls light and sight elements. You'll also want to keep an eye on how frugal your recent mileage has been. A journey data part of the center dash infotainment screen's driving information section shows a useful fuel graph to brief you on that. Uh, the same section also has an energy flow graphic showing you at any time what's being powered by what. And there's a driving style analysis screen that when the Eco Pro mode is activated uh, rates your driving with marks out of five for anticipation and acceleration and works out the extra mileage range that any more frugal driving has gained you. What else? Uh, well, routine maintenance is dictated by condition-based servicing that monitors oil level and engine wear, taking into account how long it's been and how far the car has travelled since its previous garage visit. You can check all of this using menus in the iDrive center dash display. The center dash screen's car section tells you engine oil level, service requirements, and on a diesel model, your AdBlue level too. Plus the car will give you four weeks notice of when a checkup is needed, so you have plenty of time to book it. A tele-services feature comes as part of the BMW connected drive services. You can also access through the iDrive infotainment system. Via this, before each service appointment is due, your 2 Series can automatically put in a teleservices call to your nominated BMW service centre, complete with detailed information on vehicle condition. You'll then get a call to arrange a service appointment, something that you'll have already budgeted for if, at the point of original purchase, you opted for one of the two fixed cost service inclusive or service inclusive plus packages which cover you for five years or 50,000 miles. Uh, with these, after a one-off payment, which can be as little as around uh, £400, you'll have the peace of mind of knowing that all normal work on the car has been paid for during this period, including items such as oil, spark plugs and filters. What else might you need to know? Um, residual values? Independent experts reckon that a 2 Series Grand Coupe will hold on to 53% of its original value after the industry standard 3 year 36,000 mile ownership period. That compares well with a rival Mercedes CLA which achieves 51% and incidentally it's much better than you'd get uh, from an equivalently engineered 1 Series hatch which will only hold on to between 44 and 52% of its original value during this period. Bear in mind, as usual with a premium product, that if you load the car up with expensive extras, you're unlikely to get that money back at resale time. An exception, though, might be the live cockpit professional media package that we've been recommending, with its digital dash, larger infotainment screen, and extra connectivity. It's surprising that it took BMW so long to bring us this car. Its arch rival, the Mercedes CLA, has after all been around since 2013, demonstrating the very real global demand for a compact saloon with a trendy coupe-like vibe. 
Whether you prefer BMW's take on this concept will be purely down to personal preference. It doesn't bring anything particularly new to this profitable sub-segment, but it has the required technology, style and sheer swagger to make the necessary impact. We'd like to have seen it based on the compact rear-driven platform BMW's developed for its second generation 2 Series Coupe. That would have given this car a real point of sales differentiation from its Mercedes CLA arch rival. And it would almost certainly have made the motoring press like this model more. But BMW, already uncomfortably aware of its tardiness in addressing the CLA's profitable compact four-door coupe segment niche, wanted to get this car to market quickly. Which is why the one series derived front driven and all wheel driven underpinnings are what we have, tuned at least for a little more driver involvement than is the case with the Mercedes. This two series Grand Coupe is also significantly cheaper than a CLA and slightly more efficient to run too with impressively strong predicted residual values. So how to summarize. Well, if you were already thinking of buying the 1 Series hatch, we'd encourage you to also consider this Grand Coupe because it's essentially the same car without much of a practicality downside and a considerably more stylish feel. Now, that in a nutshell sums up what this kind of car is all about. Late to this party BMW may be, but the brand has come ready to make an impact.